Welcome back to UNX Fast Forward. I'm Chris Ganji. And I'm Ethan Swanson. We're coming off of the first qualifier in the third round of qualifiers to get to the third major event at Movement Lab LA. Yeah, and so we had a lot of ninja killers on this course, which we're going to take a look at. But our top three men in this were Darren Perez, Adam Rail, and Max Feinberg. And on the women's side, we have Chanel Arenas, Olivia Calasano, and Anna MacArthur making their way to the third major event. But this course was brutal. We had a four-minute time limit. We saw two finishers, yeah. and that's it. And multiple pulled ninja killers there are a couple spots that were just crushing souls out there a lot of souls were crushed in this course <laughs> um no it's absolutely brutal and and the two people that did finish less than a second and two seconds to go pretty crazy crazy pretty great time management though <laughs> i don't know if that's that's not good time management <laughs> if you're doing things where you only have a second left that's poor time that's management. perfect time management <laughs> If we're talking about the ninja killers, the first of which was the flying gauntlet, a combination of three obstacles, salmon ladder into wing nuts and flying wheels and uh, flying squirrels and all this crazy stuff. But it was just so brutal. 66% fail rate of the athletes that got there. Absolutely brutal. You're you're using you're relying on your upper body for so long on this. It's it's absolutely intense, and you could hear us during the competition, during the commentary, yelling, "Take your rest! Wait a second, please!" <laughs> but I mean, just some athletes jumped right into it. Some athletes did take their rest, and honestly, it was all across the board. And there's just so many moves. I mean, starting with the salmon ladder, just to get across and up. I mean, it's so many moves just to do that part. Let alone, there's so much left, and every extra swing just crushes you, especially. Especially on those flywheels where you don't have a lot of grip. Well, it starts with the same ladder, and that's there's a lot of power involved, and so there's so much energy in the power it takes to make those moves on the same ladder. And then by the time you get to the end of it and you're on the, the flying squirrels, you're using a lot of core strength and you're just gassed. Yeah. And hey, when you do beat that section of obstacles, hey, you're home free. Wrong. <laughs> you got the hanging boards, which had an 80% fail rate. Ten athletes got there, only two of them finished it. And you could see just this. This was brutal. Those boards were thick. It's, you're pinching with everything you've got, and even somebody like Carson Voiles, who looked smooth, yeah. boom, all of a sudden he's off. You're gone. Gone. Get <laughs> out of here. I mean, it just speaks to how difficult that obstacle was. Uh, Arnold Hernandez built those obstacles to make a more difficult version of the floating doors, and he did. It was brutal, and that's yeah. why we only saw two people finish this course was that 80% fail rate. Well, I mean, especially on that obstacle alone is the technicality of it. If you aren't using your feet, it, it's doable if you have inhuman grip strength. You know? Yeah, I mean, we saw from some of the younger competitors who didn't necessarily have the experience on the hanging boards, you could see their feet weren't in the right position to be successful. Right, and they weren't. Uh, that's what it came down to is do you have the technique and the strength left at that point to do it, and only two people were uh, Adam Ray, which was the first of which to do so, and Darren Perez breaking through. Yeah. But now we're going on to our big time moments. Oh, I'm so excited to get back into big time moments. First of which, we just talked about a little bit, Carson Voiles on the Sam ladder, making some amazing moves. I love to watch it. The most efficient of anybody on the Sam ladder, I think, in this competition. That was so much fun to watch. And, you know, a lesser known competitor, Alex Real, he's going through younger competitor, and he was the first to link the flywheel into the flying squirrel. Yeah, and just unbelievable to have the grip strength. You're holding on to these tiny ledges and to be able to connect right into the next obstacle. Saves time, saves energy. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Big moment. Me too. <laughs> and then talking about Olivia Calasano, not only just getting back to the third major, she's been at every single major. She's amazing. But on the UFO catch, she caught on the front of the UFO and saved it. The grip strength just to lock it in. If you're not directly in the center, you better have the grip strength to save it. And she did, and she beat the obstacle. And she scared me along the way because yeah. I thought thought that was going to be the end, but made it through. Yeah. Never question Olivia Calasano. <laughs> <laughs> That's the takeaway there. But then we have to talk about Kai Beckstrand. Kind of came out of nowhere, in all honesty, and set a pace that, at the time that he ran, I thought was going to be untouchable. It was so fast, and he was the first one to make so many efficient, smooth moves. It's hard to do that and be the first one to do it. I could not believe, and I, I mean, no offense here, but I could not believe he made it through that upper body grip gauntlet with taking no rest before the salmon ladder. Yeah, you're yelling at him to rest, and he I, proves you wrong. I couldn't believe it. I mean, he jumped right into the salmon ladder, and I'm thinking, 
how does he have the energy and and without taking any rest? It was unbelievable. Yep. And then also another young athlete. The young athletes came out strong. Max Feinberg, who actually took the third qualifying spot. But what I want to talk about here is he was so efficient, more efficient than anybody else on the tilt bridges, and dismounted from like so far back on the last bridge. And it's just the confidence in this competitor, and that's why he's coming to the major. The confidence he had to just make that move. Hey, I'm not going to waste my time making extra moves on these tilt bridges. Yeah. I'm just going to throw for it. I'm no dummy. <laughs> no, but I mean, it, it paid off, obviously, and he took that third qualifying spot by only five seconds ahead of Jesse Lucero and moves like that is what made the difference. Absolutely. The speed just unreal. Yeah. Big moments. Big time moments are one thing. But now we're going to the UNX top four moments starting with Darren Perez's save on the hanging bars. Dude, Darren Perez taking first place here but an unreal move here. I thought it was over. He was reaching for it and trying to pull it in. I was like, oh no, there's another person out on the hanging boards. And for him, if he would have fallen there, he wasn't fast enough to be in the top three he had to save it and when it mattered most he did save it and took first place yeah incredible yeah and next we're talking about adam rail the other course finisher but i the, the big thing for me was when he got to the hanging boards he had a plan of attack which was just to skip all the boards i yelled at him and told him not allowed and he had to change that with not a lot of time left and then fly through his hanging boards i mean just the the mindset to change that and finish with less than a second left and he, like you said he didn't have a lot of time left and he flew through those boards and i mean adam rail is a fast competitor but this this obstacle in particular is so hard to move fast on and he made it look easy. It's a slow obstacle. He did make it look really easy and that's why it's one of our UNX top four moments. Uh, and next, talking about Noah Jones. This kid is amazing. He's like one of the most exciting athletes to watch <laughs> out there. But specifically, on ledge launch, not able to get up to that second high ledge and try to figure out and he finally pulls through. Well, this is such an awesome thing to watch is he's trying to figure out out. He's on the obstacle relying only on your fingertips. Your energy is burning at this point and he's, he's, he's not getting it. He's failing. Changes up the strategy midway through the obstacle and figures it out and completes it. Yeah. On Believable and so much fun to watch. That's why I love watching Noah. He has to do, he has to get creative and do obstacles a little bit differently than some people, and he still does it. And he makes it look good. Yeah. And going up against our top moment from last time we did the UNX Top Four, which was also Adam Rail, <laughs> his one arm save back at Ninja Warehouse on those humongous wheels. So we got Adam Rail in here twice. Can Adam Rail beat Adam Rail? Is he the only one who can be, <laughs> be himself? But no. I don't know. There's some good moments here, and uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what you guys think. Mm -hmm. But now we want to go to our obstacle highlight, which is part of our flying gauntlet in the Can You Fly and Keep On Flying. We're going to check a lot of the action out right now. a challenging string of obstacles. You're burning at that point. Oh, I love it. You're de de <laughs> definitely burning at that point. But, uh, I mean, that's all the action from our first qualifier in the third round. And we're looking forward to ultimately to St. Louis. You know, Jamie Ron is putting together that course and he is a soul crusher. Jamie Ron does not like to have finishers on his <laughs> no, courses. So it's going to be really interesting. The field that we've got is absolutely stacked. We're going to be unpacking that. Um, but it's going to be an awesome competition. Yeah, I mean, you talk about the things that, that Jamie's done with this course. He's only had one course finisher of his in the last five years, and it's Donovan Matoyer, who's actually competing at this qualifier. Yes! <laughs> yeah, baby! It's going to be so exciting. But it's going to be awesome, so make sure you guys check that out, and then make sure you guys go to our Instagram and, and vote for the UNX Top 4. We've got some awesome videos, and we'll see who makes it to next week. And maybe Adam can beat Adam. We'll see. He's got to get there first. <laughs> That's right. That is right. Until then, I'm Ethan Swanson. And I'm Chris Ganji. We'll see you guys next time.